Hey everybody, welcome to the first C++ tutorial. Um, I actually did about seven or eight of these and then at the end of that I realized that you couldn't even see them because something happened uh, with the quality on YouTube. So anyways, we're gonna redo these, but um, that's all right. So what we're doing here is um, we're looking at your first C++ programming source code. And what that is basically is this stuff here. This is all the, the colors and words you're seeing here and symbols and this is just a list of instructions that's going to tell our computer to do something, you know, in our program. So basically, this program here is um, pretty much one of the easiest programs you could ever make. What it's going to do, it's going to print hello world on a screen. And that's all it's going to do. So let's talk about this, how it works. I just mentioned a, a C++ program is a list of instructions. So basically, that's all this stuff again. Um, and how this works is by building functions. So here is our main function. Um, let's talk about this first and then we'll talk about these two lines up here after. So basically C++ programs need functions and they always need a main function. So that's this here, this is the name of our main function. Um, what it says, it says int or int main and then open bracket, close bracket. So int is basically stands for integer and this is the, the type of um, variable that our function will be returning. So don't worry about that for now, we'll talk about that later. Um, just remember, for now, when you're writing your main function, always write int main. And I've been saying main a couple times, that's just the name of the function. And here, there's nothing in the brackets, we could just have easily have written void. This means the same thing, but um, I prefer just to leave it blank. So void or blank, you know, or nothing, I guess, is exactly the same. So that's the name of our function. Um, here we're looking at an open bracket and then a closed bracket, or a curly brace, sometimes we call it. This, from here to here, this is the body of our function. And this is, well, we're going to have lines in here that are statements. So this line here is a statement, and it ends with a semicolon. And this line here is a statement that ends with a semicolon. Um, pretty much most functions will have more than one statement or two statements in this case, but uh, this is a really simple program. So let's just break down what's going on here. Well, I said before, our program is going to print hello world on the screen. So here we have hello world, this is what we want to print on the screen, and it's surrounded by quotation marks. And so we could have typed anything in here. Um, this is just a string of characters. First it's an H, then an E, then a few more things, then a space, etc. So we could put anything in here and we're going to send that to the screen. Now the way we do that is with this thing here, it's called C out. And that basically just tells your compiler um, that, hey, I'm going to send something out to the screen. You know, and then here we have this thing here, and this is called the insertion operator. So, basically, for um, for a program that's going to run or a function that's going to print something on the screen, we write C out, then an insertion operator, and then what we want to send to the screen. In this case, it's a bunch of characters after one after another that form a string. Then what we're doing is we're going to close that quotation mark, and then we want to do one more thing here: is we're going to end the line. Basically, we're going to have another insertion operator. Now we don't have to write C out again. Um, once you write it once, that's fine for that statement. And then here, end L. Um, this basically is the equivalent of just pressing enter and it's going to drop down a line. And so I'll show you that why we do that in a second. Um, and then we end that statement with a semicolon. Um, basically semicolons are kind of like the equivalent of like a period in English. We would write sentences in English and end it with a period. Something like this. We say, hey, this is a statement. You know, in English we would write a period at the end. In C++ we write a semicolon. Okay, cool. So that's the first statement. And now the next thing that here is it says return zero and semicolon. And don't worry too much about this right now. Um, I'd say for now, just always include this in your main function. So what it's meaning is the compiler is going to come down, it's going to start at the top of your file, and it's going to read everything, and it's going to enter your main function, it's going to do all the statements. And if there's no errors, um, it'll keep going and it'll get to return zero and your main function knows that if you return a zero then everything up to this point which is the last point in the function was is successful and it's great like there's no problems so that's just kind of a check for us um, okay so now let's talk about these two lines so we talked here this was our main oops <laughs> this down here was our main function but we didn't talk about these two lines yet well this one up here has a number sign that says include IO stream. What this is doing is this is linking us to another file or it's including another file that's not part of our file. For example, ours here is called main.cpp and this 11 here is just a line that I'm on. So I could click you know, here and that's line one or I could go down to the next one, now it's line two. So you get the idea. So what this is doing, this is just linking to another file that's gonna help us with um, IO stream. This is the input and output kind of things. 
Um, so you don't really need to know how it works right now. I would just say if, um, always include this for your first couple files um, or programs, sorry. And uh, you should have no problems. Um, now, the next thing here, it says using namespace, std, and then has a semicolon. So what this is, um, this is telling us to use the namespace standard library. So anyways, this isn't really a file, but this is just telling us it has a bunch of pre, kind of pre-compiled things in there. For example, cout is part of that library. So if we didn't have this here, say we just deleted that, um, our compiler will start at the first line. It's going to include the I.O. stuff. It's going to come down here and it's going to enter our main function. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to see the C out and our compiler will be like, what is that? This looks like count or something. I've, I've never heard of that. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know what's going on. And so anyways, um, but if we include, oops, uh, there we go. If we include uh, this using namespace std, when our compiler gets down to C out, it's going to be like, oh yeah, I remember seeing that up in the, the standard library up here. Perfect. Let's see out. I'm going to print something to the screen. So anyways, that pretty much sums up our first program. So we're going to go ahead and build and run this, and we're going to see what happens. So here we go. All right. So we just ran our first program, and this is everything you see is part of that. So let's just talk about it. First of all, we have all this stuff up here, which is just ignore that for now. This is just, you know, my name and a computer and like where I saved the file. So just don't worry about that stuff. That's uh, just a bunch of garbage you don't have to look at. Then here it says, hello world. And hey, that's what we wanted it to say. Awesome. And then it says here, log out and then process completed. Again, this not so important. Um, that's just extra, you know, background stuff that's running. Um, so let's talk about a little bit about this. Let's see. Um, Remember I mentioned here we wanted to end the line. So let's go back here and let's take this out. Um, all right, and now if we run this again, here we go, you're going to see something a little different. Because remember I said it bumps it down. Um, after you know after we've written something, it's going to be like it's pressing enter right here. So before logout was down here, and this stuff isn't really part of, you know, we don't really want our user to see this stuff. So anyways, that's why we always want to end lines. It's just a good style um, to have if you're... Uh, you know, just writing programs. So just um, for another example, instead of writing hello world, maybe you want to write something else like, hey, I just wrote my first program. And you're all excited. So uh, we can go ahead and run that. And let's take a look at this. And oops, forgot to close that last one. So anyways, Let's look at this. Hey, now it says it has all the same garbage up here and all the same garbage down here. But it says, hey, I just wrote my first program. Cool. So anyways, now you can kind of see how you can type things onto the screen. And yeah, come join me in the next video and we'll talk about a few more tricks you can do.